up, mommies and daddies? How's it going? It's Alyssa, your girl Alyssa all day here. I have my merch shirt on and I wore it in my last video too, so it's cool. It's cool, we all just wear the same clothes. Anyways, let's start over. What up, mommies and daddies? Let's be nurses and stuff. That doesn't work either. What up, mommies and daddies? Let's survive nursing school together, shall we? Hey guys, today's video, if you couldn't tell by the title, is basically tips for you mommies and daddies on how to survive nursing school. Surviving nursing school without children is a feat that you should be proud of. It is not an easy task. When you have children, you really kind of, you're just kind of sadistic. Like, let's be real. Let's be real. Those of you that are, that are in it, you get it. You get it. So basically today I'm going to go over my top tips that helped me and my husband and our marriage and my children all survive nursing school. With that said, make sure you are subscribed. I make nursing videos, vlogs, decluttering videos. I don't know, I just do whatever I feel. So if that's your thing, subscribe, make sure your notifications are on. And if you have any tips for the other mamas and daddies, please leave them in the comments below. All right, so I first wanna tell you a little background about my story, and yes, you should stick You should stick here. I'm gonna to try to condense it. It's a long story. We're gonna make it short. Long story short, I had a baby while in school. That was a high-risk pregnancy. We were told there was a high possibility that she would have Down syndrome, which obviously came with its own stuff. Uh, my oldest daughter was diagnosed with Chiari malformation and syringomyelia and cranial cervical instability, and she had brain surgery all I was in school. Uh, that happened right before nursing school. It was not easy. Fast forward to nursing school. I don't know how my marriage survived that first semester, I, if I can be completely honest. The first semester of nursing school was the hardest. Probably, I mean, granted, the summer before I started nursing school, Delilah had surgery, and then we had the first semester of nursing school, and a lot of the times, stresses like that will break a marriage like on its own. So that first semester, it was really trying to figure out how the heck this is gonna work, who needs to do what, basically. It, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you my tips that I learned through this struggle. Don't get scared, it's okay. So there's my story, and I just graduated. I'm taking NCLEX today, distracting myself making this video. <laughs> yeah, so let's just get into our tips. I made a different tips video. They're more basic tips for people without children, so definitely check that out. I'm gonna try not to repeat that stuff, so. First things first, I'm the realist. Moms, dads, you know you need a planner. You probably already have one because you have children, and children have things going on. So here's my planner. I kinda went over in the other video how I go through my planner, so I'm not gonna tell you, but you will need a planner. Put all of your dates, print out your schedules and your syllabus. At the beginning of the semester, put all of your due dates in your planner and all of your life dates. Doctor dates. You ain't really gonna have dates with your, your spouse, so you don't even have to put those in there. It's fine. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. You really don't have time for that though. Next up, buckle up. Um, if you're already in nursing school, you know this, but it is going to be the hardest thing you've ever done in your entire life. You thought raising kids was hard, try raising kids during nursing school and you, you, we really need medals, let's be real. Next up, I have a big calendar. I'm actually going to take you guys and show you what I mean. We have a big family calendar. It is January, so this is, it, this is just one that I got at the dollar spot, but my husband's in a band, so he has shows, so we will put doctor appointments, shows, don't mind that. Uh, any crazy clinical, anything that needs to be known gets put on here for all to see. Next up is this handy dandy whiteboard. And this is basically what we do for our week at a glance. And I will typically, obviously I'm not in school, but once I start working, which is pretty soon here, uh, I will have my work schedule up here. Typically what I do is if I have like a crazy day, Honestly, I put like my school schedule, like this semester I had Mondays and Wednesdays, so I would just like put like Alyssa class from this time to this time, Alyssa class this time to this time, and if Charlie had band or whatever, it went up on that board. So the, the monthly thing was really nice, and so was the weekly thing because that's just a quick at a glance. And then everybody just knows what's going on. If you're better and you can use like a digital syncing calendar, you do you. I'm a paper gal, we, we tried that, it didn't work. Next up, if you have a partner or you have a close family member or friend that can help you out, divide and conquer. I'm obviously going to speak from my experience since I have a spouse, but one of our biggest struggles was I was doing absolutely everything. When I was doing my prereqs, I pretty much didn't have a ton going on compared to nursing school, so I was basically a stay-at-home mom that also went to school and did YouTube. <laughs> 
When I started the nursing program, I realized I couldn't do it all. And honestly, I was just freaking out because I felt so much guilt because I had always just taken care of everything. I had always been the one to do all the dishes, all the laundry, all the cleaning, literally everything, doctor's appointments. And I realized, and I just, I expected my husband to read my mind and know like, hey, if the house is a mess, clean it. Hey, if the lawn needs to get mowed, mow it. But my husband uh, works better with to-do lists and he asks for to-do lists. So we kind of like basically discuss what things he would do all of the time and those were his things. And then if I wanted additional things done when I was overwhelmed, I would make him to-do lists. For example, baths are his thing. He does all of the girls baths for the most part, unless he's at band. And then he also does, uh, he makes the girls lunches. I got the girls ready in the morning. I thought it was a fair trade off for him to make their lunches at night. So that was his thing. You need to figure out what are going to be your things and what are going to be their things. And then you don't have to worry about those things and you don't need a to-do list. So that was honestly probably the biggest issue that we had. Like that was what we thought about the most. I had to get over myself and realize he can't read my mind. I know that sounds really silly, but that was, <laughs> that was my mentality at the time. Next up, if you have small children that nap, nap time is not your homework time. Nap time is not Netflix time. Nap time is not YouTube time. Nap time is homework and study time, if you are lucky enough to do that. Uh, otherwise, some things that I would do is I would get up super early. I'm talking, especially like before exams, I would get up at 4 a.m. and study from, you know, for, you know, three hours, well, two to three hours before the girls got up. Otherwise, if you are a night owl and you're not exhausted at the end of the night, definitely stay up after the kids go to bed, but you need to kind of take advantage of those like prime times where you can get stuff done. It's a lot easier to get things done when the kids are asleep than it is while you're trying to distract them with a puzzle or a TV or something. With that said, do not feel bad if you are studying for an exam, you're home alone with your kids, and you need to turn on some little Einsteins or some TV or, you know, ABC mouse on a tablet. I don't know, whatever. But don't feel bad. You gotta do what you gotta do. It's a short period of your life. Next tip is if you can, leave the house to study. I admittedly did not do this nearly as much as I should have. I would just go in my bedroom. But let me tell you, you think the kids are gonna bother you? No, honey. It's gonna be your biggest kid bothering you and in my case that is my husband I swear I made him put a lock on our bedroom door so I could lock the door and guess who always comes in yes ladies and gents it's my husband so if you can leave the house I would literally get things done in a, a third of the time if I would leave to do homework or study versus at home it's just the truth next up and I know I know we're all type a here I get it we are all neat freaks we are all very organized we are all type A, okay? But I hate to break it to you guys, you gotta find something that you can let go. For me, that was laundry. The laundry gets washed, and then the laundry sits in a basket. This is actually the only laundry that I have full of stuff. But during school, I would basically wash the clothes and my husband and I would separate each person into a basket and that that was that because taking time and folding laundry is so time consuming and it was my one thing that I chose to let go. In addition to that, I also realized that sometimes my house was gonna get behind and it was a nightmare. Let me tell you fam, I love cleaning. That's what I do when I should be studying and I'm stressed and I love a clean house. Like I made a cleaning video, you can check it out up here and basically, life got away from us and our house was a disaster. Like I'm talking the messiest it gets. And I had so many people, and I don't mean to be rude, saying, well, this is how I get it done. Well, honey, I'm so happy for you, but you know what? Life, life gets a little bit crazy and I do the best that I can. And just because my best ain't as good as your best does not make me a bad person. So, ignore the haters, you know what I'm saying? For real, you gotta let it go, you're gonna drive yourself nuts. With that, Declutter as often as you can. Obviously, decluttering is time consuming, but I'm talking spring break, fall break, winter break, summer break. Declutter. Pretty much every single break I had, your girl spent a few days decluttering, and I'm still decluttering, but getting rid of clothes that you don't wear, don't need. Like, your kids only need like 10 days worth of clothes tops. Like, I just went through all my kids' clothes. Declutter if and when you can. Next up, set everything out the night before. Everything. Your kids' lunches, your kids' backpacks, your kids' clothes. If you have older kids that care, let them pick out their clothes. Do baths at night. Everything needs to be done 
at night. You need your backpack out. You need your laptop charged. You need everything ready by the door, your workout clothes, your clothes clothes, whatever. It needs to be done at night because in the morning you don't have time for that. Especially if you have classes in the morning and you gotta take, take your kids to school, to daycare, whatever. Set it out. Next up, mom guilt. I'm sure dad guilt's a thing too, but moms, something biologically in us where we have all of the guilt. And uh, a lot of people ask for tips on guilt, and let me tell you, it doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna have mom guilt. Uh, I have mom guilt about not having a clean house, but that's just life. With this, the only tip that I really have is you need to understand the value of quality over quantity. And basically by what, what I mean by that is put your phone away and spend 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes with all of your kids or one kid at a time and just give them your undivided attention. I know you're stressed. I know you could be studying, you know, and I know, but it will help your mom guilt just like a little bit and it'll make your kids so much happier. I found that when I was really busy and I didn't take that little bit of time with my kids, they were crazy. They were absolutely crazy. And guess who else was driven crazy? Me. So if it benefits you, benefits the kids, it's, it's a win-win. So take just like a little bit of time. A little bit of time. And with that, typically Sundays were my homework and study days and Saturdays were the days with my family. Obviously if I had an exam, both days were school study days, but I found that having Saturdays just be my hangout day really helped me stay sane, even when I felt bad for not doing homework. Next up, kind of short, kind of hard to do, sounds easier than it actually is. Don't sweat the small stuff. Just don't, you, you just gotta let it go. Don't get caught up in the drama at school, especially if you're an older student like me. No offense to you youngins, but the youngins, they, they care a little bit more about stuff that doesn't matter so much. So just don't sweat the small stuff, just focus. This is for you, your goal is to become a nurse. It doesn't matter what else is going on. Family drama, friend drama, just try to avoid it. <laughs> Next up, this is going to be a controversial tip, I believe, and that is to work as little as humanly possible. A lot of people... I'm not sure about that. What is Alexa doing? That is so nosy. Anyway, I don't know what I said to even trip her. Um, what's I even talking about? A lot of people don't think that I work, but I actually do work. What you guys are seeing right now is me working. <laughs> uh, when I put up a YouTube video, I film the video, well, first of all, I plan the video, then I film the video, then I edit the video, the editing takes the longest. Then I make a thumbnail and all kinds of crazy stuff, and then I reply to comments on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. It is a job, and I don't make a ton of money doing it, but I've made, you know, a little bit, you know, to get some groceries, you know what I'm saying? But if you can work as little as you possibly can, and that was obviously kind of the benefit of me doing YouTube. I've been doing it for a long time. Do I recommend trying to do YouTube for a career? Not unless you've already been doing it, because it is not a get-rich-quick scheme. But if you can become more frugal and let go of, like, luxuries, like the goal here is for you to become a nurse if you can live without some luxuries like getting your nails did your hair did I mean I get my hair done like three times a year your girl gets highlights I just got it freshly done, but I let that I let it grow You know just realize this is a short period in your life and you know cut down on your grocery bills If you're single definitely hit up assistance even if you're married sometimes you're eligible for assistance like you do what you got to do but the goal here is to become a nurse and unfortunately you're gonna have to do whatever you possibly can do, for real. It's really hard to work and I know that there's awesome mamas out there that are working full time because that's the only choice that they have and I absolutely commend you guys because I, I truly can't imagine with having kids, like seriously, all of the props to you guys. My last and probably most important tip is you need to take care of yourself. You need to do something for yourself, whether it's only once a month or, you know, ideally it's a little bit better to do it at least once a week, whether it's take a bubble bath. I'm not a bath girl, but I know some people are bath girls. Take a bath, go out with a friend, something, whether, even if it's your, like exercising or reading a book before you go to bed, you need something for you because let me tell you, honey, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. So do not feel guilty. You need to take care of yourself in order to take care of everybody else because that's what mommies do. And I'm sure there are daddies out there that do it. I'm not trying to be, you know, exclusive here. I'm. I'm overgeneralizing. We understand this, right? I know, I'm being stereotypical with the roles. But anyways, 
those are all of my tips. This was a really long video, but I it's such a struggle as a parent in college, so I really wanted to give you guys my absolute best tips. Like I said, if you are a mommy or a daddy or just a nursing student and you have an excellent tip that has really helped you throughout nursing school, please leave them in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You can also check out my basic tips video if you didn't see it already, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Go on with your bad selves. <laughs>